This is the Ballad of Blasphemous Bill by Robert W. Service. I took a contract to bury the body of Blasphemous Bill Mackay. Whenever, whatever, whatsoever the manner of death he die. Whether he die in the light of day or under the peaked faced moon, in the cabin or dance hall, camp or dive, mucklucks or patent shoon, on velvet tundra or virgin peak, by glacier drift or draw, in muskeg hollow or canyon gloom, by avalanche fang or claw, by battle, murder, or sudden wealth, by pestilence, hooch, or lead, I swore on the book I would follow and look till I found my tombless dead. For Bill was a dainty kind of cuss, and his mind was mighty sought on a dainty little patch with flowers and grass in a civilized boneyard lot. And where he died or how he died, it didn't matter a damn, so long as he had a grave with frills and a tombstone epigram. So I promised him, and he paid the price in good Chicago coin, which I the same blowed that very night down in the tenderloin. Then I painted a three-foot slab of pine, here lies poor Bill Mackay, and I hung it up in my cabin wall and waited for Bill to die. Years passed, and at last one day came a squaw with a story strange of a long-deserted line of traps way back of the Bighorn Range, of a little hut by the Great Divide and a white man stiff and still, lying there by his lonesome self, and I figured, must be Bill. So I thought of the contract I'd made with him, and I took down from the shelf the swell black box with the silver plate he picked out for himself, and I packed it full of grub and hooch, and I slung it on the sleigh. Then I harnessed up my team of dogs and was off at the dawn of day. You know what it's like in the Yukon wild when it's 69 below, when the ice worms wriggle their purple heads through the crust of the pale blue snow, when the pine trees crack like little guns in the silence of the wood, and the icicles hang down like tusks under the parka hood, when the stove pipe smokes and breaks off sudden like, and the sky is weirdly lit, and the careless feel of a bit of steel burns like a red hot spit. When the mercury is a frozen ball and the frost fiend stalks to kill. Well, it was just like that that day when I set out to look for Bill. Oh, awful hush that seemed to crush me down on every hand as I blundered blind with the trail to find through that blank and bitter land. Half dazed, half crazed in the winter wild with its grim heartbreaking woes and the ruthless strife for a grip on life that only the sourdough knows. North by compass, north I pressed, river and peak and plain, passed like a dream I slept to lose and I waked to dream again. River and plain and mighty peak, and who could stand unawed? As their summits blazed, he could stand undazed at the foot of the throne of God. North, I north, through a land accursed, shunned by the scouring brutes. And all I heard was my own harsh word and the whine of the Malamutes, till at last I came to a cabin squat built in the side of a hill, and I burst in the door, and there, on the floor, frozen to death, lay Bill. Ice, white ice, like a winding sheet, sheathing each smoke-grimed wall, ice on the stovepipe, ice on the bed, ice gleaming over all, sparkling ice on the dead man's chest, glittering ice in his hair, Ice on his fingers, ice in his heart, ice in his glassy stare. Hard as a log and trussed like a frog with his arms and legs outspread, I gazed at the coffin I brought for him and I gazed at the gruesome dead. At last I spoke. Bill liked his jokes, but still, gold darn his eyes. A man had ought to consider his mates in the way he goes and dies. Have you ever stood in an arctic hut in the shadow of the pole with a little coffin six by three and a grief you can't control? Have you ever sat by a frozen corpse that looks at you with a grin and that seems to say, you may try all day, but you'll never jam me in? I am not a man of the quitting kind, but I never felt so blue as I sat there gazing at the stiff and studying what I do. Then I rose and I kicked off the husky dogs that were nosing round about, and I lit a roaring fire in the stove and started to thaw Bill out. Well, I thawed, and I thawed, 
for 13 days, but it didn't seem to do no good. His arms and legs stuck out like pegs as if they were made of wood. Till at last I said, it ain't no use. He's froze too hard to thaw. He's obstinate and he won't lie straight, so I guess I got to saw. So I sawed off poor Bill's arms and legs, and I laid him snug and straight in the little coffin he picked himself with his dinky silver plate. And I came nigh near to shedding a tear as I nailed him safely down. Then I stowed him away in my Yukon sleigh, and I started back to town. So I buried him as the contract was in a narrow grave and deep, and he's there waiting the great cleanup when the judgment sluice heads weep. And I smoke my pipe, and I meditate in the light of the midnight sun, and sometimes I wonder if it was those awful things I'd done. And as I sit in the parson talks, expounding on the law, I often think of poor old Bill and how hard he was to saw.